In our current healthcare system, it's very important to be your own health advocate. Now, if you're kind of in a, you're comfortable being kind of aggressive and asking questions with your doctor, then terrific. If you're not, if you're not that type of personality, then bring that personality with you to the doctor's office. It's always a good idea anyway, when you're listening to um, your doctor talk about your condition and hearing recommendations. So I always say four ears are better than two, but bring that person who, who has that personality that, that you need if it's not inherently your own. But it's, but it's excellent to have two people listening because they'll, they'll hear more things. Um, but if you're not comfortable again asking questions, then bring a friend. It's absolutely a good idea. You'll get more data because I can't tell you how many patients say, yeah, I went to see my gastroenterologist. I have actually absolutely no idea what he said other than here's your prescription for, you know, the antacid. And that's about all they glean from it, which is, is not what, what you need. You need to be empowered by the information that you're learning. Um, the second thing I want to go over actually is seven tips that are red flags. So if you hear any of these red flags from your doctor, it's very important to find a new clinician quickly because these are in the vast majority untrue. So what's number one? There's no cause. Yes, Mary, you have an autoimmune disease. Yes, you have fatigue. Um, there's, there's really no cause for autoimmune disease. There's really no cause for um, fatigue, migraines, you know, you just have to live with it. We have to give you these drugs and, and, and that's all we know. That's all we can do for you. Number two is it's likely due to stress. Now, that's not to say that stress doesn't cause a lot of conditions. It does. But in, in the example I'm trying to give you is this is code for Mary, it's all in your head. Um, and so t way too many patients come to see us who say, I'm just so tired of doctors keep giving me psychiatric medication, anti-anxiety, antidepressants, because they say, listen, there's nothing wrong with you. We can find nothing wrong with you. Therefore, it must be all in your head, nicely quoted as you're under a lot of stress. So here's your psychiatric medication. Uh, and again, stress management is very important, but way too often this has nothing to do with why you're suffering they're just not digging deep enough to find that root cause so what's number three? Oh, I love this one it's just bad luck you know some people get this some people suffer from migraines some people have autoimmune disease uh, some people get diabetes you know it's just it's just kind of bad luck you know it, it's too bad utter nonsense um, unless you were skiing and somebody hit into you and you broke your leg, then the diagnosis of broken leg due to bad luck, we can go with that. But with, I'm talking about the chronic degenerative diseases that are actually killing us as Americans, then no, bad luck has nothing to do with it. What's my next one? Oh, since it's in your family. So since it's in your family, you're, you know, a lot of women in your family have thyroid disease. A lot of the men have heart disease. Diabetes is in your family. Uh, I'm talking about type 2 diabetes. Uh, for me, I, I had migraines. My mother had migraines. Therefore, it was destined, apparently, that, uh, that I was to have migraines. That's not the case. Even with things like um, Alzheimer's, that there is a genetic component, it's a, really, it's a really small percentage that we're talking about. Genetics are real. They are a predisposing factor, as I li like to say. But if we work hard enough to counter that predisposition, you don't have to be stuck with any of these diseases. So my next one is number five, um, a drug is the only thing we can offer you. So all we can do is manage your symptoms with a drug. You know, here in your migraine, here's a pain reliever. Your acid reflux, here's an antacid, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And again, not to say that initially we don't use medications as well when someone's in sort of a life-threatening kind of situation, but the truth of the matter is when you have the kind of tools, if you think about how the body works and the fact that it's amazing in its ability to repair itself, you want to look for what is compromising your body's ability to self-heal. 
when you analyze that, and that's where the extra uh, testing, more sensitive testing comes in, where we can say, what, re what really is this root cause? And when we, we get to that deeper root cause, we're able to wean that person off the medication because they literally don't need it anymore. And I love that because now we've restored function to the body and the body is working on its own um, as it should be. And we see this all the time with antacids, which are very, very common, blood pressure medication, which people are told they'll be on for life, um, cholesterol medication, diabetes medication. These conditions are all reversible if you're willing to do some lifestyle and dietary change, which is, is very exciting because all of these conditions um, long term uh, lead to more and more trouble as well as the drugs that they give because they have side effects. And uh, second to last, oh, love this one, it has nothing to do with what you eat. You know, the fact that you have IBS, yeah, it really isn't too dietary related. Or uh, the fact that you have the antacid, you know, you stay away from, are you eating like hot chili peppers every meal? Oh, okay, well if you're not, then it probably has nothing to do with your diet. And food has everything to do with pretty much everything. I know that's a very blanket statement, but think about it. How are you fueling your cells? How are you telling them what to do and whether to be pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory? It's what you're putting in your mouth. So food has everything to do with most conditions, other than that broken leg we talked about earlier. And last but not least, um, the cause is the fact that you're overweight. Now again, there's a lot of truth to the fact that overweight and obesity do lend us toward and move us toward certain diseases. There's no arguing with that. But the next sentence is, the cause is because you're overweight, eat less, exercise more. Again, if you're overeating calories in a very big way, sure, exercise, great. But there are plenty of people who can't shed a pound and they're not overeating and they actually are exercising quite a bit. So what do you say to those people? This is not a bl blanket answer. The body will gain weight and will hold on to that weight for a lot of different reasons, gut hormones chief amongst them. And so you have to find out why the body is in this hold mode and it's not wanting to burn calories. So um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with others. I hope these were helpful tips for you. If you want, to get more data and say, okay, yeah, I'm, I'm actually sick of hearing these things from my doctor, but you know, I've just sort of gone into apathy about the whole thing, thinking that there's, there truly is no option. There pretty much always is an option. And that's what we do here at Root Cause. And we're more than happy to do a free consultation, send you in the right direction and, and really give you that data that you need that you've been wondering like, yeah, but why? <laughs> why is this happening to me? There truly is an answer. We'll talk to you soon.